India has opened up its defense and space sectors to private industry recently. It's supposed to be a game changer for the Indian industry, MSME, and the economy as a whole in the long term. To understand its impact, we needed someone who can trace the evolution of these industries and can realistically explain the change in policy. We at NBC are lucky to have Dr. Subarao, who is one of the best exposed technocrats in the field of defense and space, and who has also worked in ISRO and NRSA before becoming a space entrepreneur. He left the safety of his job at ISRO to become a space entrepreneur in 1992. This was at a time when India had launched just about 25 satellites with four failures in its history. The future too was not looking that rosy, but he had faith in the future of space technology and was one of the first companies to participate in the technology transfer program initiated by ISRO. He is part of all the satellite launch vehicles from SLV to GSLV MK3 and has been part of every satellite launched in India since 1998. More than 50 launch vehicles and about 100 spacecrafts to be precise. He has formed a joint venture by name Avonsat with Indian of Switzerland to design, manufacture and assemble complete satellites and launch his own satellites. Again, a first for an Indian company. He is also a wizard in remote sensing and was instrumental in providing remote sensing based solutions in e-governance, property taxation, agricultural crop forecasting, hazard mitigation program, etc. Not now, 15 years back. His natural diversification was into defense. Due to the expertise acquired in space, he could easily transfer the knowledge to missile technologies and he has been part of almost all missiles ever produced in India, including BrahMos. He was also part of the LCA, Tejas, and even had the distinction of solving the problem for GTRE, the gas turbine research establishment, in developing a telemetry system for the Kaveri engine. This telemetry system was the size of an apple and had to have its own power source. This was the first of its kind at that time and completely developed in India at a fraction of the cost of something which a French company offered without any performance guarantee. A complete list of achievements of Dr. Subara will take more than a few days. Therefore, I stop with highlighting only a few of them. But the perspective is that he chose the past path less traveled and has come out successful only due to his grit and determination. Many a time he could have left this business and could have become something else or somebody else, but he chose to stay and weather the storm. And finally, today's policy, he is also part of the policy making, you know, an influencer, I would say. And to interview a legend like Dr. Subarao, we needed someone with domain knowledge. We did not have to look too far. In Mrs. Uma Meyapan, we have both domain knowledge and a great advocate of MSC in one. She is director commercial of IAPAN Engineering Company, a company which is into defense supplies and has had the distinction of design and development of hydraulic tilting mechanism for guns more than 15 years back. She is an alumni of Bits Pilani and a quick absorber of new ideas. She is passionate proponent of collaboration and cluster approach amongst the MSMEs to overcome the current challenges. Hope that this interview helps many MSMEs to join the defense and space bandwagon. I now hand over the floor to Mrs. Uma. Thank you, Anna. Uh, good evening, Shibara Garu. It is a great honor and privilege to be talking to you and discuss about uh, defense and space. As Mr. Naran said, your achievements are, uh, the list does not stop. It just continues pages after page. But we just wanted to know, I'm very curious to know, as from be being working in ISRO to becoming an entrepreneur, what made you become an entrepreneur and what made you take this path? Thank you, Amma. So, in fact, I have to trace back to the 
my childhood or a boyhood, whatever you call that now. Um, see, when I was working in ISRO, as you mentioned, you know, the few satellites were launched by then. And the first of its kind that made an impact on the developmental sectors is IRS, Indian Remote Sensing Satellite. After that was launched, the ISRO felt that, you know, must see how best that can be made use of by various sectors. So therefore, the task was given to agricultural sector, irrigation sector, the water sector, forestry, et cetera, et cetera, to many other sectors. And after that, everybody felt that that could be used to some differently for some purpose, and there is a lot of potential. So we thought we should conduct one seminar called IRS Utilization Program, a seminar covering the IRS Utilization Program. And we found, and many people came and uh, participated, presented papers in that, and they said, good, this is going to be useful, this is a great potential. See, by then, elsewhere, in NASA launched a Landsat series of satellites, by them, a couple of them. And there was also Landsat follow-on programs in America and Europe. So the, the potential that has been there has been recognized by every sector. And we find that this can be made use of, and there's going to be a, a future utilization for this program. Then quickly I realized that, in fact, so one of the recommendations made in that seminar was that this should be used for commercial application. So therefore, I immediately put few thoughts together. I just looked at what's the kind of potential that this country can have in this remote sensing program and thus with the space program. Then I quickly worked out few numbers. Look at the geography, Indian geography, so much. So therefore, what kind of data is needed? If that kind of data is needed, what kind of a resolution that satellite should have? Then how many satellites do you need? What should be the coverage? Then we arrived at, uh, I arrived at some kind of a satellite program related. Now, this is only one sector of the entire space program. Then to have this the satellite to be launched into the space, then we need many launch vehicles. So how many launch vehicles we needed? Basically, what I'm saying is, trying to say is that we are working backwards from the, the requirements on the ground to the space segment. Then for the space segment to go on, how much launch vehicles will be required? If so many launch vehicles are needed, then what should be the industrial support that ISRO needs? Then I made a good report. Then I sent it to Professor Yara, who was then chairman of ISRO. His first reaction was, are you sure that you can survive outside ISRO? And I said, yes, sir, looks to be great potential, so let me take a plunge into it. Then, of course, the good thing the ISRO is always the support, the entrepreneurs who come out of that and they can, you know, support them. So that's how I started my program. And, of course, I took the permission from my wife that, you know, if I don't get the salary at home, hope that you don't mind that, you know, we have to survive <laughs> for a while. Then she said, okay, no problem, we'll do that. That's how I started a humble beginning. And subsequently, when we then uh, when first, first uh, see, uh, I must tell you that Indian space program has four defined components. One component is the satellite. The second one is the launch vehicle that puts the satellite into the space. And the third one is the applications on the ground that can be communication application, or it can be the com terrestrial communication that goes along with that, or it can be the remote sensing and spatial databases creation. So first I chose in the easiest area where it can be allowed to get in without much of a strategical questions that are being asked. So that's why I got into the remote in the first instance. Later, the easier part is to get into the launch vehicle. Then we signed few contracts with the technology transfer with the launch vehicle for the launch vehicle program from Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Then we got into that. Then we got into the satellite program. So thus, we, I covered the entire the program from, you know, from end to end. That's how what we are today. And also did the build the facilities around uh, wherever the ISRO facility happened to be there. First of all, uh, ISRO set up regional remote sensing centers in five different corners of the country, like in Nagpur, Kolkata, I mean, Na Na Nagpur, in Bangalore, in, you know, various locations. So I set up my first uh, facilities in those locations. So that, you know, the ISRO facility also will be available to me. Later, when I got into the electronics and other areas, embedded areas, I able to build the facilities in Hyderabad, Bangalore, and in Trivedrum too. That's how encompassed. 
I mean, what was the opportunity, chance, trying to do? Like a carpenter. You ask the carpenter, why are you doing only that? You know, carpenter was only the job. So I know only job I've been doing that. That's all. Nothing great behind that. Thank you. Sir, sir, because you were in ISRO, you said you took a strategic entry of getting how to get into the commercial business. But how is it for the uh, SMEs who are outside, who do not have connection to ISRO? Is the entry barrier high for space and defense sector? Or, or how do the MSME get into it? How do they approach? Okay. Then I must clearly distinguish between the space department and the, the defense part here. In the space, so when I started, there were a few satellites and few launch vehicles. But today, they're talking about more number of satellites, more number of launch vehicles. So therefore, opportunities for uh, uh, MSMEs are very many today in that. In fact, already, in fact, I must tell you that about 60 to 70% of the budget in ISRO goes to industry only in that directly. And the number of people working into that, I think very many. I, mean, I can't give the numbers, but they're very many. But one major difference here is that they have to qualify the, the company in terms of their processes and the people and the, the end product, how it comes out of that. So unless they, they qualify them, they will not do the job to them. In other words, suppose you take a, a technician working in the company, they would like to train the technician. Then they would like to train them on the documentation. And the engineers should follow certain process on that. So all these trainings are offered by the ISRO and they give the job to those companies. And once they start giving a job to them, a particular segment, they continue to give the same job, support them also for, forever into that. That's a good thing about that. But when you come to the defense sector, this is entirely different. There's nothing like a process of this kind or the, the training of this kind. I think it is the kind of a registration that's available for them. You register with them. And uh, maybe I think I have to distinguish once again, you know, in the defense, like a DRDO, for example, where the research is being done, they give a lot of work to outside people. I mean, many of them, you know, both mechanical, electronic, chemical engineering, many of them are into it. But then, again, there's nothing like a licensing or qualifying the process or qualifying people. And you just list them all, I have this equipment, I have this part of it here, then simply the registration is taken on that part of it. And once the opportunity comes, they'll send you an inquiry. Then you will record you for L1, you'll get it. When ISRO is not just L1 that matters. What matters is many more things to the competence. That's basically. Hmm. So in defense, L1 matters. In defense, L1 matters. But sir, when, when it comes to a development item... Unfortunately here, sorry to intervene, unfortunately from here in the defense sector, and many of them, and the, 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 the government of India is very clear. When say L1, L1 has to be among the, among the oranges, among the mangoes. So the comparison should be among that. But here, you know, most of the time it's not happening. They're worried more about the vigilance, more worried about the CBA, more worried about inquiries, etc. Okay, they try to accommodate as much as possible into it. So that's why the one who has developed a system once today is not necessarily that he's going to be there into it once again. But today's mm -hmm. scenario is changing. That way, you know, there's going to be appropriate items are being recognized. They're also continuing to give the work to the same company. So at least to some extent, there's going to be good into that. Maybe I can draw a few parallels to you. And again, it will come back to DIDO. DIDO has done a great job in terms of developing many missile programs. For example, you could take Akash, Astra, you know, the various programs into that, which have been now inducted into the, the, the armed forces. So what we struggled, all of us struggled there earlier with a few numbers. Now the numbers are going to be more and more. So therefore, if we take Akash missile program alone, there are hundreds of uh, MSMEs working for them. And that's going to be the good. That's a, that, they sustain development. If you look at the number of people working for those MSMEs, uh, MSMEs and supporting the Rakash program, until there was a report made, I don't have the, the rightly, I can tell, I can't tell the statistics, it has a huge impact. Mm -hmm. Similarly, now another program coming up like uh, Astra, that's also going to be the same number. Already 50 numbers of program have been given by Air Force, and the numbers are going to be 200, there's another 200, 400 numbers, et cetera. There is a good chance today that under Make in India, things are happening very positive sense. That gives a lot of opportunity for MSMEs. Good to hear that sir, the Make in India is going to help MSMEs uh, to get into these two sectors. But um, 
or their awareness program for the msmes do the msmes know about the programs that you're talking about how do they approach there are in fact uh, these people some of them they conduct seminars to create the awareness and to take internet being the medium and uh, there are a lot of things available in the internet itself you get to dido into the, the the website a lot of information available to you web be a lot of information available to you and look at the brds you know the air force is a lot of work is done in their base uh, repair depots at various mm -hmm. in the country so look at their website you have the complete information on that the seminars are can't being conducted by caa fiki sidm all the people so one thing is we have to keep the ears and eyes wide open the information available to us uh people talk about defense corridor like last, last two years we've been talking about defense corridor and defense ex expose uh in india which has happened i think two two times once in chennai and once in lucknow uh so is this a good uh, venue for opening up for the msmes for them to come and see and uh, find out the opportunities yeah we'll hope so we'll hope so so i want to divide the different sector into you know chronological into different ways So when we 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 got the independence first to maybe about twenty years, what we were doing is importing left and right everything on that. For the maintenance of them, are making some of the components where these are set up, which were by British themselves, and the same thing is continuing. Then the DIO came into the picture. So there, the job is to make them more the self-reliant in need weapon systems. but however there are certain delays in certain activities for example lca program itself we just started long ago it took quite 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 some time for us to do that now by the time some specification will change something will change but by the time you know armed forces also must be ready to accept what has been made earlier but by the time you know they say you know no no this become all obsolete we want to go for something new one so that's where the conflict was coming on to that and again you know they go on import something else somewhere else on that but now the present government after that you know last 10 years at least the government has started imposing what's called offset program mm. that means anything more than 200 million dollars of things being imported then at least 30% must be done in this country okay. which means those oems who have been supplying them mm. they must make certain they must create a facility a tie up with somebody here in the local industry and manufacture them in india itself that's called offset program then subsequently when this present government come up you know Five years or ten years ago, under the Modi's Prime Minister Modi, they start insisting upon the Make in India. Now, DPP Defence Procurement Policy of 2016 was already in place. Now that is going to be revised to now the new program for 2020. That um, they already called for the draft was in circulation. They called for the comment from the industries, from Fiki, from everybody on that part of it. Everybody has given that. In fact, a lot of seminars happened during the last three months on this. and uh, that's going to be perhaps more impetus going to be more impetus to indian industry whatever earlier was was proposed as a make in india might not have happened under offset etc fully but mm -hmm. now it is going to happen manacha vacha karmana looks to be the, the government is determined in this area so for example they say anything more than less than 200 crores that must go only to 100% to indian industry Anything more that go to maybe you know the technology is not being available here, you know goes outside. But those companies must tie up again within India, with Indian companies. They so have to have tie up with Indian companies. They, they must tie up with Indian company for manufacturing that. For example, look at the Rafale. Mm -hmm. Rafale, the so many aircrafts are going to be imported. Now they formed a joint venture in India. There's something is happening in that area. So for example, we are also planning to work with Russian companies. We formed joint venture with that. Of course, a lot of bureaucracies are coming into the bump. Russian bureaucracy. and indian bureaucracy has certain problems but we have overcome all of them and slowly that is going to be a reality very soon in fact today i must tell you if i can tell you the what's the difference budget different budget roughly i think if i remember right about 73 or 74 billion dollars for the current year alone in that of course there is a capital equation most of the money will go outside the country the helicopter something of that kind but when they have to make certain things in india that money Get get into again in India to tie one company, tie two company, and tie three companies. So what's the tie one company? The large companies are treated as a tie one company. And look at the government DPS, the public servants themselves are tie one companies like a Bell or BDL etc. And the the integration part has to be done by them. 
Whereas Tesla, they at the component level, at the precision component level, at the electronics level, board level, subsystem level, that goes to MSMEs. So that way, hope that you know, great opportunities are waiting for us. And if you look at the potential, there's a lot of stats available in that. You know, how much is going to the space requirement, the defense requirement. I tell you, the numbers are mind-blogging. Mm. But all when this happened, youngsters like all of you, all of your youngsters, you know, you're going to be good for you in future. Good to hear, sir. Sir, like the defense corridors opening up, that creates a lot of awareness for the MSMEs. Yeah. Uh, and so the defense corridor, what you mentioned, sorry, if I missed uh -huh. the point. Yeah, two. See, already there have been industries spread in this country in the defense and space all over. Mm. Now, in order to give a impetus or more focus to that, the government had decided that you know there must be a kind of a corridor. That's a kind of a, a management jargon which comes from abroad to us. So, therefore, they declared the Tamil Nadu Koyamuthu that here as one, one corridor and the UP is another corridor. Now, you see, not that you know new companies are going to come up immediately onto that, but the point here is they create a necessary ecosystem, which means your infrastructure related, then testing facilities, because every MSMEs or small companies may not be able to have the, the testing facilities with them. So, therefore, the testing facilities are going to be created in these corridors. In fact, the government of India has already created the testing facilities in DRDO, which are open also to the public. And also in the various locations, the country in Hyderabad, in Madras, and you know, we have in Bangalore, like you know, for electronics, mechanical, metallurgy for testing, etc. Already they've been created onto that. No, this will be enhanced more and more onto that. So that's why the corridors have the connectivity with the rest of the other industries, and some more industries also encouraged to come there and do that. See, the all along, when we government undertakings have come up, you know, the thoughts of thousands of acres for them. For example, you take RCA in Hyderabad, the idea was hundreds of acres for them. But when it comes to industries like MSMEs or any private industry, it's hardly going to be talk about a few square yards or maybe an acre or two or few acres of land. Now, when you talk about the defense corridor, a lot of other companies are coming into India, opportunities will be given to work on the larger framework. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that's going to be the, 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 the purpose of this defense corridors. So basically, it's a cluster formation in that area. Exactly. You're right. Okay. Now, since you talked about testing facility, the R&D and testing for uh, both space as well as uh, defense is going to be high investment. Yeah. Uh, so for testing facility, as you said, uh, DRDO and all are opening up to the outsiders also to come and check. Is it, is it the same for, say, space, for simulation? Uh, the, the software is uh, very expensive. Uh, for an SME, you know, uh, so is there a, a common place where they can go and uh, simulate or check their uh, uh, project? The number one is educated institutions. So I, come I come across many of them, you know, they allow the simulation activity to be done in their laboratories. Already mm -hmm. it's happened with them. That in fact, in Chennai also, look at the IITs, they have the facilities. The secondly, as I told you earlier, the government of India has created certain facilities already for testing. I can tell you about the electronics and mechanics. For example, electronics, let's say a thermal chamber, which is maybe about 15 to 20 lakhs of rupees, may not be, you know, somebody may not be able to afford to do that. But the facility is available in the respective areas. One can go and do that. So DID also allows the testing facility mm -hmm. available to others too. Or EMI AMC facility mm -hmm. that costs about 60 crores to 100 crores. So we cannot afford to do that. So they put the certain facility, HVL, Bell. So they are available. But the available, see, earlier activities small for the MSMEs. Now, when this Vamana becomes Visarupa tomorrow, with all the things coming under Make in India, then huge facilities will be required. Hmm. In that case, there can be clusters like, like corridors, defense corridors, what they're talking about it. That's where going to be huge facilities. In fact, recently, recently means about a couple of months back, I remember there is a expression of interest from defense ministry that private industry would like to set up mm. the testing facilities they can apply to them then they'll choose certain companies to set up that kind of facility also so that is a lot of encouragement of late okay so that helps uh, yeah. Yeah, all of us all small companies to be on the now uh, when we talk about uh, make in india are we i mean as a policy maker as an industry are we looking at just import substitute and re-engineering or are we looking at new designs from India? 
Yeah, till yesterday, we were into the only just copying whatever that, you know, the OEMs gives to us to make them and offset, do simply only that. The drawings will be given, we'll be doing it. But now in the, in the defense DPP policy, they have envisaged the three types of things only. Number one is what is called, it is something related to by IDDM. That means indigenously designed, developed, and manufactured part of this one, IDDM, India, make in, make in India, by India. So therefore, they are prepared to buy that from India itself onto that. Any new company, they substitute. Especially after the Russia had the problems in supplying those goods earlier, and any substitute that comes out of that. In fact, HL encourages many, Bell encourages many people in this regard, government undertakings. I'm sure CVRD also doing that for the tanks in that area. So therefore, if now specifically they mentioned this by IDDM. So that's one category. Now, there are another two categories are now being created now. The second category is related to make two, make three. Make two is where the industry comes forth. There'll be certain products, the, the defense ministry says that we need them. Industry come forward and say that, yes, we will invest money and we develop this. And we know that the huge numbers are required in future. So therefore, on NCNC basis, what it means is non-committal basis from the government side, non-committal side from our side. You can take up that activity, you develop the product and give to them. It can be Air Force, it can be the, you know, the Army related or it can be naval related and say that, yes, this can be done. Then the opportunity of getting larger numbers. So this is the kind of investment one has to make. Mm. There is another one called the, 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 you know, make three. In the make three, the government itself says that, you know, you come forward and we'll give you some money for doing this. But in this, not that you go 100 people go forward, they give them 100 people to funding. But the point is, again, they choose. There's a pick and choose. There is a process involved in that, you know. So the idea is government is trying to encourage people in different ways. Mm. And now the second part is, if in fact I, I attend a few seminars with the Navy and Air Force, when you go there, they display certain items, which they got it earlier from the, the OEMs. Now they are not supplying them. So what to do? They said, this is the one, this is like a block box. This is the functionality. And you come forward, you develop this part of it, give it to us. We put them along with other systems. It works out to me, we'll buy the rest of the things from you. That's the other way of doing it. I mean, many people have been doing it already. I'm sure in Nagpur, in Pune, in Bangalore, a lot of you know, Air Force related, many people are doing it. And the second other part is HL. If you look at the HL website, they put many things into that. Said, oh, we need so many systems. They, they have to be made in India. The original OEM is so and so and so in Russia. There are two ways of doing it. One is you go and type with them and make them in India. Or you have the functionality now with you. You develop the system on your own give to them, test them onto that. If it's it, then so many numbers will be required by them. Mm. HL has been experimenting on this. And we have participated into this, we have been successful into that. So therefore, opportunities are very many. Only thing is we need to keep our eyes and ears wide open. Yeah, ministry also took, uh, I think a few months back, uh, took these, some of the companies to uh, Russia for, uh, for knowledge sharing or any tie up possibility is possible. Is there an outcome after those kind of trips? How, or how do these trips help us? In this, again, you know, the trips are two kinds. These are organized by the ministry with the support of CIA or FIKI or one of those. And our friends from SIKI and FIKI, maybe SIKI and CIA, they would like to have as many seminars as possible abroad. Now, MSMEs have to choose which is relevant, which country is relevant. Then you have to act around that. And in India, every alternate year, Defense Expo. Yes. Then the, the, that you know the, for uh, for the Air Force related flying etc. That's also being organized. Yes. Okay, that called air show. Mm. So these are the good opportunities where all the OEMs will participate all over the globe to come over there, interface with them, interact with them. Then you find if something, a talking Tom, something can happen on that part of it, then you can become the part of the same, you know, all the groups going from India and you can talk to them on that. 
it is not that this is going to give immediate results. For example, when I tied up with the Russian company about doing this, in fact, the effort went through for over almost six to seven years. Even till today, it's not become a reality as such. But I see a potential in that. But that's going to happen, 100%. So once the government of India is clear in their mind that must be done only in India, mm. automatically everybody will fall in line. So that situation is prevailing today. Thanks so to we, Prime Minister Modi ji. Thanks to him that Make in India is happening now. It's, it's becoming a reality. We can actually sense uh, things happening now. Uh, but there is an issue in terms of material procurement. Uh, so most of the drawings uh, that have been given uh, are uh, old ones. So the material now, we may have changed the material or it may not be locally available in India. Uh, but an equivalent can be available. Uh, we, we face it as a barrier to make, actually convince uh, the customer to take the equivalent material uh, for, for prototype checking. So how do you cross this barrier with your experience? So again, here I must draw a distinction between the space department, uh, ISRO, and again defense. In the space, the people who are getting involved in the quality this is the division called Osachi. The system will really grow. The best of the people work in that. You find designers also into that. So when you're doing that part, naturally they look at, you know, what can be equal and what should be done, et cetera. And they choose what's available and what is the best for the season. But when it comes to the defense, they say that, you know, the OEM has this, so therefore I must give only that. So that insistence gives a problem for us. However, today, most of the materials available for import. I mean, I'm talking about metallurgy related. I think they're all available from the outside, not that, you know. But there are certain restrictions again. If that comes under a certain restricted category, that may be difficult to do that part of it. That's where substitute one has to look into. In this connection, I must recall, the recently the CDS, you know, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Rawat, he mentioned, when you're looking something from Indian side, even if our Indians succeed to the extent of 70%, we must accept that in the first instance. Then subsequently, they can by iteration, they can go through that, they can always do that. See, we can't expect your children to become immediately Newtons and Einsteins. There's very thing wrong. You must always look at them. The people start working on that. Yes, good, they're doing a good job. We want them to improve on that and do that. Then only things can happen in this country. Unfortunately, all along, they were not looking that way, but today only the insistence is happening. That's because today only we have the people in the Illinois affairs who are Bharatiyas, mm -hmm. the two cents. I hope that they will continue to be there forever. So since you talked about uh, children and coming to the youngsters, uh, how to make use of all the IIT research papers or any other institute research papers that the uh, the students and the professors are presenting. They're all papers and their research papers are kept there. We don't see an interaction, too much interaction between the industry and the, uh, the brains that is there in the academia. So how to build, build a bridge between the two and, and you know, develop more in terms of the theoretical knowledge or the research paper they, that they are presenting to uh, help the industry to develop something or to make something in India. I think that's a major deficiency we have in our educational system in India. That is, the professors continue to be professors. They end up their career only writing papers and organizing seminars of that kind. And very few innovations come out of this. That's because they are not aware what industry needs. Number one. Number two, in fact, if we cannot recruit those professors and assistant professors to industry, they will not function here. They will not fit in industry at all. That means if we want the better quality of students to come out of that, first professors and assistant professors and lectures, they must know what industry needs. So therefore, the exposure to industry is a must even for them. That part is 100% lacking in this country. Therefore, in fact, I propose this kind of thing, you know, a lateral movement from education institutions to industry, from industry to education institutions. In fact, you take the universities in America, the Stanford or the MIT, the professor work there for a while, then they'll go into another company. Maybe they go to a larger company, like Google, et cetera, but they work there for a while, they'll come back. And they can, they do a kind of a lateral movement. 
but he had nothing. That's a silos, you know, that's a, on their own, these people are on their own. And when they come out, of, even the students, when they come out of that, and when you interview them, they know only, th not even the theoretical knowledge much. But you retrain them, refashion them in many ways. That's the only way of doing it. Lateral movement is the only way of doing it. And in fact, I'm also part of uh, many R&D institutions within the universities. They call us for a meeting and they say, that, you know, this is the syllabus, sir. The syllabus to be approved by the, the committee. So since we are a part of the committee from R&D, we have to approve this. And I said, we size, size some changes in that. There's no, sir, this come from Delhi. We can't change any one of them. And the most we can think of picking elective subject, extra. That means this kind of a steel frame doesn't work out for the institutions. That's why the innovations are very poor now in this country. I hope they change. How do you think we can influence them more to get to get them into our industry instead of IT sectors and you know brain uh, people going abroad? How can we retain them and make make them useful for our industries? Now, your question has two parts. Number one is how to make them understand this point. So that I think you and we cannot do that. We keep talking to them, seminars, etc. But I think HRD ministry has took note of this. Mm -hmm. They're talking about giving the more freedom. That's why the ranking system, and now they're all coming up into that more, more critically. So I think that situation is going to change very shortly after that. And to prevent people from going abroad, I don't think we should prevent our people to go abroad and, you know, uh, that kind of, I think uh, we should allow them to go. They must learn their systems. What are certain and done systems in Europe and America are far better than system that we have it. The reason being, our systems are mostly government driven. But they are private driven. So once India also opened up to private sector 100%, like in America and various other, other places, I'm sure we'll have better systems in this country automatically. That's why the moment a foreigner comes to India, the fellow faces the customs fellow in the airport. Then he started saying that India is going to be bad. But customs is not does not represent India. See, that's why I give the many examples of the Indian farmers. Maybe I'm deviating a bit from your question. But the point is, it is going about coming, learning, and coming back, or doing whatever is always good for that. He's not a brain drain at all. Number one. Number two, if the Indian privatization happens largely in India, like more MSMs comes to the industrial sector, the entire Indian scenario, development scenario will change. Mm. I believe strongly, though I work with the government, I come out of this, I strongly believe that in India we have 134 population. In this, the people who work in the government could be about maximum about three to four crores. The rest of the Indian, they survive on their own. You could be a farmer, or you could be a fruit vendor on the street, or the fellow who makes the dolls and sells in the street, or the one who makes the cricket bats and sells the cells on the street. Look at them, each one is an entrepreneur. That means we have so much of so many entrepreneurs in this country. And no other country in the world has so many entrepreneurs. Everybody is driven with fire. So therefore, once things are liberalized in this fashion, things are going to happen very good for the country. The future is good. That's why I would like to be young now. <laughs> you are young, sir. Uh, so what, we, what do you think about the policies? Are there any new policies in these two sectors that we're discussing now? Yeah, as I mentioned to you already about the defense sector the, that uh, Make in India policy is going to do very good for us. And come to space. The space all along is dominated only by the government and of course ably supported by private industry too. And the department has been doing extremely well all along. Mm. But I mean, they're doing well compared to another industry, other departments in the country, no doubt. But if you look at what's happening in the rest of the world in the terms of privatization and putting your things to the satellite to the orbit, etc., no, that part is a little not very favorable for the private industry in this country. For example, today my company has the fullest knowledge on a satellite. And we also know something about the launch vehicle too. If I build a satellite, I want to launch from Indian side, use it for India, I cannot do that. That's for the existing policy. It has to be dominated only by ISRO. ISRO is the builder, launcher, and also the government is most equalization. So we wanted this has to change. Unfortunately, the recent announcement with the finance minister is now changing the scenario now. They are going to create a level playing field that means private enterprise can come into this part of it. They also can think of launching, making the satellite, launching the satellites, and the bandwidth can directly be, can be sold to the common man. Okay. 
like the terrestrial communication has been liberalized, this is also going to be liberalized. Then it is also talking about predictable policy. Now the policy, there's no policy at all into that. What are the policy we have? A SATCOM policy was done about 14 years ago. Now a predictable policy in this is going to come up like a telecommunication policy. That's going to, going to do a good thing for us. There's going to be a regulator. A regulator naturally looks at, you know, if somebody stepping into each other's shoes, he comes into the picture. So all things are going to be good for us in future. And because, see, number of transponders needed for the country today in terms of this is so huge, not that what that we have to do. And uh, we are talking about the digital India, make in India. Then we are talking about uh, the digitization at every level and the mobile phones, but the change into everybody's life yeah. there today. So, so much of bandwidth is needed. So that bandwidth has to make to happen further. We need more number of satellites. It's not that we can't spend huge amount of money only on the fiber optics throughout the country and then you do that. There's huge cost. The satellites will be much cheaper on that. And earlier we exploit, tried to exploit the only geosynchronous orbit. Today, this is possible in the LEOs also and the BOs also, the low Earth orbiting too. So that's why, so whatever the people are talking about hundreds and thousands of satellites, though the LEO short period, maybe five to seven years, does not matter. We can always put another satellite into that. We can replace the satellite very quickly onto you. So, but the, the benefits of space technology is going to reach the common man, not only just, you know, meager bandwidth going to supply, but the huge amount of that going to happen. And uh, whatever happened last three months, COVID, it helped, no, people know how to do their business sitting at home today. Of course, manufacturing is a difficult part of it, but the rest of the services part, everything can happen from sitting here on the ground. Today, a farmer wants to know what's the price of a tomato, because recently, again, the farmer's policy has been liberalized. See, earlier, the farmer who produced the, the, you know, the rice and paddy in their area, have to sell it only in their area. They can't sell it to anybody else behind their district. I mean, licensed, I mean the farmer, though, entrepreneur, he has so much entrepreneurship behind him, but still, you know, he, he can't export anything. He can't do anything on his own. But today, that part is completely liberalized. Today, a farmer in Andhra Pradesh or a farmer in Tamil Nadu want to know what's the, the, the paddy price in Punjab or maybe in somewhere else in Bihar. So that's available to them today. So they can always an export, import, travel, whatever the huge amount of benefits are going to happen in this sector. So that's where the space can make all the difference. The liberalization is going to happen. Good, good to hear uh, about uh, data sharing and technology helping a common man. Uh, and this actually I wanted to ask you before itself. Uh, most of our MSMEs are into uh, assembly line production. You know, that is the kind of uh, mindset that they have because they feel that continuous running of factory and therefore a better profit. Uh, but uh, defense or uh, space uh, products are mostly batch production. They are not uh, assembly line because the quantity are not going to be really high. Uh, so it, will the mindset change or will it be difficult for them to get from assembly to this kind of a production. Yeah, you are right, Emma. Earlier, the, uh, the production numbers are low. Mm -hmm. But today, as I mentioned to you, under Make in India, when the, the OEMs come and start manufacturing in India along with the local tie-ups, the numbers are going to be more, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, when the missiles are not being inducted, whatever the DID was, as dollar, et cetera, numbers are going to be used into that. So the scenario is going to change now. Mm -hmm. See, look at uh, your Boeing company. Boeing company does not have any manufacturing facility. They have only assembly facility. Hmm. And their job is only to procure various you know, goods from various other, other, other uh, you know, tier two, tier three, tier, whatever they call that part from there. And they only simply make the assembly part of it into it. So that scenario must emerge into this country. See, what happened? You are not good in terms of making the aircraft in this country, though we are very successful in the space. And also to some extent defense. We are not doing that. We are passionate aircraft. So hopefully all these things have to change. I think they're going to change along. The present government is determined. Mm. Things are going to change. So numbers are going to be more. Nice to hear such positive uh, words from you, sir. Uh, what do you think about collaboration for small companies? They can't do or approach everything with themselves. So how do they uh, go about collaborating? Because I personally feel that they have to collaborate uh to get a bigger uh, piece of cake so uh, what do you think about how to how to go about collaborating see collaboration is two ways one collaboration is already we are collaborating with uh, you know, a, a, a company which is bigger than you in terms of manufacturing that so they outsource their job to you 
then there'll be another company like you know defense undertakings you know they give the job to another company so tier one tier two tier three that's all they have the collaborative part is happening in this within the country but when you're talking about the collaboration with a foreign company foreign oem then that is a little difficult task see they also look at you know what is the other industry what is the financial capability you know like a marriage like any other marriage when two families marry you know one to another into the they also look at you know the same fashion so not necessarily that you know a small uh, company can go and you know tag with the foreign company is a little far fetched idea but however if this is something a specialized product that a small company can make yes that can happen hmm. for example i know a few companies which have been supplying very critical small numbers the company turnover is smaller but they very critical components they are exporting outside hmm. so such things are possible it all depends upon specialization and the skill set the company will have okay sir before i throw open for people to uh, send their questions post their questions on the chat my one final question to you is what is your advice to small companies small uh, msmes see somebody should not work on horoscope if the, the horoscope says things are going to be good for next 10 years and uh, because of that planet is here this planet is there i think that should do only should encourage people that okay things are going to be bright for me in future in the same way here these policies are taking shape now we are yet to test many of them hmm. so we always work with the hope against hope that hope is just not a hope but close to reality so msm is to strengthen their belt and interact more and more interface more and more yes there are opportunities thank you sir so there's one question that has come up where they're asking about this l1 pricing that you discussed on defense they're saying that whom do we talk to about because based on l1 they have giving to uh, companies uh, the order goes to companies who do not know how to manufacture this and uh, finally after 2 years the company does not do and again the tender is released and again the l1 pricing is a reference pricing and l1 pricing may be too low for any actual manufacture of that component to fit into that pricing but uh, no it is very difficult to convince so whom to talk about or as a policy influ maker influencer can you influence uh, this kind of a thing yeah that's a, that's the biggest problem especially in defense not in space at all not the space is far better no, i mean we never talk about the other one at all in space in the defense that's the biggest problem which i face day in and day out as i know i don't find a solution to that but good part of it is they also start realizing many of the drdo sector some of the government people in the defense sector they also start realizing that their programs are getting upset on account of this therefore the go from government side i understand that in the even the dpp the, the 2020 which is going to come up they are also talking about time frames mm. and strictly adhering to time frames and accountability on that so once the accountability is fixed then people will be more careful the people who manage the program will be more careful in terms of choosing tier 1 tier 2 or tier 3 whatever the tier so then a good policy will come into the picture that i s r is doing a very clean job mm. based on the capability they they give first instead of looking at the l1 l2 exactly. pricing and the capability capability enhancement also they do on that process. okay mm, good so there's one more question from uh, a member from lagu udyog bharati they are asking can msmes in the automotive component sector graduate to defense or aerospace with the same kind of infrastructure that they have for auto components basically asking if 
without investing much on uh, other machineries or uh, do an expansion of their factory can they use the same thing and graduate into a defense uh, sector or a aerospace sector it all depends upon the kind of machinery they have with them already hmm. now if for the what to call you know the the late mission for example take the late mission you the same late mission can also make a precision component hmm. for a space industry or the defense industry i think they can as well do that but my opinion is i think auto industry they are also equipped very much with the state of art machinery i think they can do this into space and defense too that is to some extent hmm. uh there is one more question from them is uh, they saying that the main issue which we feel as msmes are facing to enter into defense sector is a tendering system they are asking that as a question is tendering system the barrier for them i don't think it's a tender system is that's a that's a way of life that has to be done even the companies like my company or i'm sure your company when you find the four five people and do the same job naturally you no know, you ask the people to give their quotation on that yeah when they are equally placed mm. so that's where efficiency matters the efficiency in terms of not only the quality but also on the pricing so tendering is a part of life that we can't avoid that when 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 options are more than one uh shubhara garu there's one more who says that is it not better idea to invite big companies such as reliance tvs to invest big in such corridors so that msmes can benefit rather than msme themselves trying to do something on their own yeah see let's look at the the, the defense and space scenario in in two, chronologically in two ways okay before this policy came in and after this policy came in hmm. the people who invested mostly into defense and space should be are something like you know people like all of us hmm. we don't find reliance into this at all earlier okay tatas to some extent they happen to be there birlas they are not into any one of these areas so the so called industries big chunk of people with sitting with a lot of money and investment capability they are not into this because they know that this industry is not blossomed fully for them to invest into that now when they started opening up completely then tata started investing into they they're tying up with people outside like it martin or maybe somebody else etc they start investing into this now when the market is opened in fact you and me are threatened directly or indirectly <laughs> in the sense we are the one we are we are the one who have been serving this industry faithfully when there were not many people around mm. now suddenly when the market opened up all the big people big bags will come into that there is no protection shield for us well like other small scale industries you know the soap should be manufactured only by these fellows and something else <laughs> shampoo should be i think that kind of scenario also would come up but in any case when the large investments come up into these corridors you know from these people lnt is doing a good job in this area they will become tier one suppliers which means they will not go down to the level of manufacturing a precision component or making the electronic board or something of that kind so therefore so that will left out to msms in fact lnt is today is a lot of msms working for them Yeah, yeah. They take care of the assembly, final assembly, where yeah. they get they it. Are, uh, yeah, uh, they only look after the, yeah. only, uh, the, the final the tier one activity. Only they look after that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that's okay. When you're talking about the platforms, they come into the picture. When you're talking about the system subsystems, all of us are there. Yeah. That's what we call. Sir, uh, there's another question which says that uh, is spare parts and maintenance the low hanging fruits in these two sectors. yeah see for example some of the components that required for air force which are not being supplied by the oems which they display they said you know this is a kind of functionality you make it up that's a low hanging fruit in fact if i attend the some of the seminars in navy air force you know they display they say that this is about imported cost of this 
small company. Now, the other company, somebody made it to offer the price. You can come forward and make the other companies also the price which is competitive to you. They're prepared to give the job to you. Mm. But here, you should have some kind of a design capability. You must have some simulation capability. Then you must know, know how it fits into the, the whole scenario. Okay. So therefore, the, the amount of risk that you're going to take is a little larger in terms of, you, you know, taking you spending money because you know just spend the money then only the, the output comes out of that so just i'm doing it i must get an order immediately well, that does not happen that's not happen. then you become you're looking for a government job <laughs> shivara Gaur, there is uh, something on this uh, design service what the question is is there a chance for msme to provide design service and support apart from component development yes See, the entire look at the engineering. When, when I started, started engineering, there was no software into that. Today, each formula, all, all the formulae have been converted into softwares. And it's not necessary that you should have complete design knowledge also. Okay? For design a particular component, what is required? What is the shape of that? What is the part of it? Just feed it every, every you know, facet of that into the computer. This is a software that runs on the part of it. Then look at it. Now, that means we should have the overall knowledge more than it deeply into the design knowledge. The software aids you now today. Mm. So therefore, even the software costs are not also not, not very much higher. I, I think uh, some kind of investment for one or two things that we should make into that. And there are many people take your services into that. In fact, Hyderabad, you know, a few companies, they are dedicated only to do the services on this. So they provide the, uh, uh, giving the software as service yeah, and uh, the MSME can use it. Yeah, they can use that. Hmm. But I know that that happens in, in industrial clusters in Hyderabad. Oh, okay. I'm sure it must be there elsewhere too. Hmm. There are uh, some in Bangalore. Yeah. Uh, there is one more question which says that uh, they're talking about commodity-based purchasing and identifying and qualifying suppliers before they start tendering. They're but, talking about the PS, the, the defense uh, companies should yeah, act like yeah, private commodity companies. Commodity based meaning? They're saying that commodity uh, started like uh, private companies, like commodity based purchasing and identifying and qualifying suppliers before they start tendering. Before the tendering system itself, they, I think they are, what he's suggesting is that uh, should we look at uh, each commodity we should look at it as a commodity purchase, identify and qualify the supplier and give the tendering only to them instead of open tendering. Yeah, that is for general goods in that. See, so mm. there are two types of things. You know, there are general goods that's required. You know, that normally just simply they buy it from the commodity suppliers. Mm. But you know, there is an engineering involved and that engineering involved along with that with another engineering component in that part of it, there's a different ballgame altogether. Mm. Okay, let's take some, some plastics related. So somebody has the plastics, that type of plastic, that they buy them directly. It's possible. Hmm. In fact, there is uh, one website, um, I'm not able to recollect in the, in the base depots website, you know, the very general items are there onto that. Hmm. Like a cloth, some kind of cloth, a particular cloth for them. You know, there are many items of that kind. They come such a general commodity kind of things that just they place an order simply. You know, once we have supplies with you, they get a quote from two to people, they place an order on the order. But many small things are involved in that kind of activity. Anyway, I think in difference in space, both before awarding a, a, a purchase order to a company, they come and evaluate the company, right? They'll come and if it's a new company, they come and evaluate, qualify the company before they accept the tender. So when you are supplying directly to armed forces, yes, there is a small evaluation is there into that part. Hmm. So they have to qualify their company for the text. It's there into it. The other question is on exports. What are the export opportunities in this sector, especially to other countries' space programs? Yeah. This is another important point now. Government of India is putting a lot of stress in this. In fact, there is one giant secretary in the Ministry of Defense exclusively looking after this. 
uh, what it was about exports you know, till about two years ago in terms of you know few hundred crores. Now they reached to the level of 25,000 crores exports. The goal is to reach, I think, 12 billion or so, shortly. Mm. See, they, you see, there are two things. It's the platforms which other people are making, and the same platforms are being available in India. And under Make India, they have to do some of the components in India. Then if they're making that, you know, by making it become cheaper here, the same OEM looks for the same thing, the same things you know, to import from this country, from India, to them. Mm. That's how, you know, the, the, the reverse export also can happen. I know that some of the Israeli companies were supplying their missiles or something to India. They identified under offset certain companies. They found them they're cheaper. They're buying them again from these people. So therefore, export opportunities are coming up now. And the government of India is, I mean, the, the present giant secretary in the Ministry of Defense and the team is extremely good. They're doing a, a very good job in that. I must tell you, in the Defense Ministry, the entire scenario changed. Uh, one Dr. Ajay Kumar is the secretary. Earlier, he was secretary for defense production. And so much encouragement of the industry. Now he moved as a secretary of defense. A lot of encouragement he gives to that. Fortunately, he was coming from from the you know, electronics, uh, what's that, the ministry called uh, IT, mm, electronics okay. IT ministry government of India. So that's where you know, so everything is open. He coming with that background. So therefore, he's trying to look at the Ministry of Defense also in the same fashion. That's why he encourages the industries. That's why the DPP policy be being refined every time. And he participated, they participate in every seminar. The entire team is extremely good. That's why I'm giving you a very rosy picture right now. Yes, Shubhara Gauri, you've given a very positive picture. I am energized. I'm sure the rest of the uh, people who are watching this program also will be energized. And we will surely work around uh, doing Make in India and uh, uh, MSME developing as a brand in India is what we would like to happen in a couple of years down the line. And thank you very much, uh, Shubhara Gauruji, for spending your evening with us on a Sunday and uh, giving this kind of a positive uh, thought process to all of us. But then they know that I would like to make add only one to you. I always look at this aerospace business is something like coconut. When you plant a coconut seed, it takes seven years for it to come to crop. So till seven years, you have to go on watering and watering and watering. But after seventh year, you don't have to do anything for that. Every bit of the coconut tree is useful. Hmm. And the aerospace industry is something. It requires a lot of patience, perseverance. Okay, You have to go through the QT, what you call that, you know, acceptance model, QT model in the aerospace, you know, you have to go through that qualification test. Then there's, things are going to be good. Thank sure. you. We'll, Thank we'll you take so care of it. Thank you. Namaskaram, Chubara Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.